Hi, my name is Taufik Ahmad. I'm Enterprise Technical Support Advisor with One Identity. And today I will be going through the installation of the Defender Management Portal version 5.9.1. Here is a list of the system requirements for your reference. Uh, please review uh, the supported operating systems and browsers. Uh, please note that the Internet Information Services will be installed as part of the setup. ASP.NET configuration as well as .NET Framework 4.5.2 will be installed automatically. Let's go ahead and begin the installation. I'm going to run the autorun.exe, click on install and install. We'll go ahead and click next, accept the terms, click next. I will leave the defaults enabled, although you can install the management portal separately. We'll go ahead and click Next. We'll use the current account, which is a domain admin. The scheme is already updated. And the port number by default will be 8080. We'll also use the default domain admins as the administrative group. Click Next and Install. This will complete the installation. We will uncheck the security server configuration for now. I'll click finish. And we can close the installation and the folder. I'll go ahead and edit the web.config file. There's a couple of settings that we will enable, which is in the program files, one identity, defender folder, management portal, www folder, and we'll open the web.config. The app settings tag has three settings. I'll enable two of them. The first setting is the remote DC or remote domain controller. This will allow me to point the management portal to use a specific domain controller in the environment. I'll edit the IP address or DNS name with the domain controller in my environment. Then I'll go ahead and edit the second option, which is a group lookup impersonation. Instead of using network service as the default account for group lookup, this will allow the user logging in to be used instead. I'll close the web.config file. And I'll also edit a setting in the registry to add the permission for the network service account and give it full control on the following registry key which is the scheduled reports located in the path below. I'll right click on scheduled reports, go to permissions, select the network service account and give it full control. We'll apply and OK. And we can close the registry. Next, I will restart IIS from the command prompt as an administrator. I'll run the command IIS reset. Once IIS has restarted, I can go ahead and log into the management portal. I will enter the username for my administrator account, a password, the domain name. I'll check Remember Me and sign in. Now that we're logged in, we can see the dashboard screen. I'll go ahead and select the configurations tab to define the service account. Here I can add in the domain name, username and credentials for my service account. Optionally use service account for all actions and save. The roles tab will allow me to define groups for each role. For the administrator role, I will choose the domain admins group. For the reports role, I have created a defenders report group. I'll define that and save. On the log receiver service tab, it will give me some information on the service port. On the reports tab, 
I'm able to define the path for the log's location. This can be either a shared folder or a UNC path where the files are located. Moving on to the self-service settings, here's where I can add the group to allow the users to log into the management portal to request their own software or hardware token. For now, I will use the domain users group. And I'll click OK. This window appears to allow me to select what type of tokens the users are able to select for their own. And um, I can always edit the settings after I've selected them. For now, I'm just going to select a few. Go ahead and click OK. And if I wanted to edit, I'll go to Edit Permissions and remove the ones I don't need. Once I'm finished, I can go ahead and click OK. The tokens will be created in the Tokens OU under the Defender OU or any other OU I can define. I'll save the changes. On the Software Tokens tab, it will allow me to change some settings, the User Verification setting, and the Token Activation Information Delivery. On the hardware tokens, by default, I'll just use hardware token. On the email settings tab, I can define my SMTP server address, which will use a port 25 by default. In this example, my mail server does not require authentication. So I will leave the SMTP server requires authentication checkbox unchecked. I can define the from address. And save the changes. You can also send a test email to confirm that the functionality is working. On the pin settings, I have the option to enable a PIN for hardware or software tokens if need be. Going back to the home page, this will show me the options available for an administrator. I'll go ahead and click on Defender Reports. Here I can view the Audit Trail report, for example. I'll go back and select a different reporting period for example, last year, and I'll click on Preview. This will show me a little bit more information during last year's audit. There are a few different reports available here. On the Scheduled Reports section, this will show me any reports that are scheduled, and the generated reports will show the generated reports. For example, if I change to authentication requests, I'm going to go ahead and schedule. I'll, for example, choose monthly. I'll give the report a name, for example, auth r for authentication requests. And I can change the time that this report runs. For example, I can set it to 5 p.m. And since it's a monthly report, I can choose the day it will run during the month. Go ahead and save. And now the scheduled report appears here. I can run it now. And the generated report will appear in the generated report section. I can go ahead and view, and this will show me the authentication requests during last year. This can be saved as an XML or HTML file. You also have the option to print. Going back to the home page, 
Other options are available to request a soft token or register a hardware token. We'll go ahead and sign out. This concludes our video for today. If you need more information, please visit us at support.oneidentity.com. Thank you.